Hey everyone, welcome back to EIS Alaska. This is Matt coming at you with another voiceover. Just gonna give you a little more information as we go through this video. So this is our usual morning routine. We just, you know, gearing up in our ring gear, getting our cup of coffee, getting energized. Tape our legs with some electrical tape. Seen comments in the past wondering what we use to tape our legs. That's all it is, is some electric tape. So cheap, quick, and effective. Alrighty. You need a few codfish out? Yeah. Um You've probably got them out. Let's see, now. one, two, three, four and a half. better down here than up here in the way. So we start off our morning uh, by prepping the deck. We get out our hanging bait, pull out our herring and salmon, and get it ground up for the day ahead. Beautiful morning now. Yeah. Uh, what do you think we should shorten it up there? We don't have to cut this. Uh, yeah, we could just shorten it up there. <coughs> that works. We usually get up a couple of hours before opening, which is at 8 a.m. So you can see how the water flows out of the fish hold, out of the center hold right there. That's the reason for our, our gasket on the hatches and the bolt downs. It keeps all of that water from down flooding into our side holds. It also keeps our bait nice and crispy. Once it starts getting soft, it doesn't grind near as well in the bait chopper. So we like to keep it good and frosty. I think that should be enough for today with that stuff maybe. I guess I'll just grind more if not. Yeah. You want to put that up forward? This? Yeah. Nah, it's just to hold the tarp down. gonna be awesome and not put mine on but that was short-lived <laughs> so I'm just strapping this door shut here that holds it all in yeah we're just dumping this pre-chop stuff back in so that it fills that bottom uh, bottom hole up, then I'll end up with unchopped bait. That has to reprocess, or go through reprocessing. What I mean by that is that I put the pinks in first yesterday so that they fill up this bottom chasm here. And then after we were done chopping bait, I just opened the door and have to chop them up a little bit. Not a big deal, but a little extra work. Dad's shortening up our our little gaff set up here. It's a hair long. That's an interesting knot. <laughs> I didn't even 
untie it. It's weird. Didn't want to chop our nice piece of blue steel up. Keep the extra length up top where it doesn't matter. down there lickety split. <laughs> need a little bit of work, need to do uh, bearings and the motor was, was crashed on it, but got it rebuilt and sure is nice to have. Yeah. Beautiful bait. So here we are on our first buoy of the day. Dad pulls up on it, flips on the hydraulics while I put it in the block. And just kind of thread the buoy line, the trailer line through the block right there. This top part is always a little bit loose until it comes up on tension. And that's why we like to have that sinker line on the top. Is that it reduces the chance of another boat running over the line. This blue steel that we're using here is brand new, so it's really slippery in the block. And it also right. tends to float. So as much as we can do to reduce the chance of it being run over, we'll do it. Yeah. Ooh. A lot of smalls. Looks like all smalls.
I know there's some keepers in there. Do we want to count count first? That's kind of what I'm wondering. Yeah, let's count first. Yeah. Get an idea, huh? Yep. <laughs> that makes sense. So we're starting to measure out the crab here. Uh, our crab sticks measure five and a half inches from the inside edges. So what you do is you push the stick over the crab and if their carapace exceeds your, your stick length then they're a legal crab. Any of the little spines count, so uh, we're very careful not to beat up the crab as far as knocking the spines off with your stick because that would just make them a uh, sublegal crab. So we go slow. There's also a few crab in here that are very, very close, like they rub on your stick close. So while they are a legal crab, uh, we just chuck them back because we don't want to risk uh, having any undersize in our tank. What, what would you do with this guy? Uh, begrudgingly throw them over. <laughs> Thirteen. Nine. Not bad. It's okay, huh? Yeah. Keep leave them here. Back for now. Yeah. So just rigging up the pot to set back here. Uh, that's how our pucker strap works. You just wrap it around the bar and clip it onto a snap there on the outside of the pot. And just roll over the rail here and kind of slide it off. You'll have to excuse my grunting and stuff. Never realize how much you grunt until you listen back to it on tape. Just reusing the old hanging bait. Still some meat and scent left on it, might as well. There's a fresh one on there too. Oh yeah. Yeah, GoPros aren't the best at capturing low light environments, so. Hard to beat it. Nice view from the office. Unfortunately, it doesn't really come out on camera the way it does with your eyes, but take my word for it, it was a beautiful morning. Yeah, very nice. We're lucky, dude. We're so lucky. Days like this. Uh-huh. Hard to be angry at anything. <laughs>
was fun. Yep. Did we buy that blue steel new? We did, right? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Not as good. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, right? Yeah. Meant to be. Was that first one on that middle batch or? No, it was on the very end. There's kind of where it says Rocky there and we had some there. That one okay, uh-huh. It was kind of like an okay spot. Yeah. So as dad repositions, I'll keep myself busy by reloading bait jars and bait bags and the uh, hanging bait. As you'll see here, I just dump the used bait into this tub and that just kind of I don't know if it's effective, but we think that it keeps the scent from like going everywhere on your fishing grounds. Like the last thing you want is the crab really spreading out, so we we just uh, dump the used stuff into a tub, and then once we're off our fishing grounds, we'll just dump it.
Yep. So a few words about our gear. Um, as mentioned before, we use blue steel crab line. I forget what tensile strength it is, but it's it's pretty robust for our pots. Bigger square pots, you'd want to use uh, some heavier stuff, but it is plain sufficient for us here. We run about 60 fathoms, actually 66 fathoms of blue steel and a 15 fathom shot of that white sinking line. And attached to it is our pots, which is just a regular cone pot. Um, it's, I'd say, probably four foot around on the bottom side and three and a half feet tall. It just sits flat on the ocean bottom. The crab climb up the side of it and go right on the top right there. Uh, they weigh probably... 75, 80 pounds each, so they're pretty manageable for just myself. Um, easy to move around on deck, and as you can see in the back there, they nestle in each other really good. So, in the case you have to move a bunch of gear around, you could just stack them in there. I think we fit around 10 or 12 pots total on deck before it just becomes uh, too cluttered and hard to work, so. Uh, really efficient for us on our little boat. There are other pots too. There are pyramid pots, which, like their name implies, they're kind of in the shape of a pyramid with the top cut off. And kind of the same thing, they can have a tunnel on them. They could also have side tunnels on them. And then finally, there are just uh, regular crab pots that you'll see, like on Deadliest Catch, the big five or six buys that are really heavy. They're probably more around 800 pounds each, 500 to 800 pounds, depending how old they are.
apologies once again for the wind noise. This is actually a pretty good pot. Uh, we like seeing pots like that. Quite a few crab in there. So we're really starting to get our system down here. It always amazes us how things work out. The, the snap just happened to be on the correct side for Dad to unclip it and dump the pucker. So that surprised us that we didn't have to mess around with that. You can see that the escape mesh that we weaved in there on the side uh, is actually kind of loose and floppy. That had us worried. Uh, during fishing, uh, but that was actually only on a couple of them. That was really floppy. We just uh, tightened it up with some some more twine, and it seemed fine. I don't think we lost any crab due to it, so or at least I hope we didn't. So just going through the motions here, we usually run our crab pots around 30 times a day. In the morning, our first set, or our first soak from overnight is the 20 pots. It takes us probably three or four hours to run all of them, depending how spread out your pots are. And if you're moving around your pots a lot, it'll take some more time, but by, by the time 1 or 2 o'clock rolls around, we usually start hauling again for 
just whatever we can haul before 6 o'clock rolls around. And this year, uh, the daytime soak was actually fishing better than the nighttime soak, so we found that interesting. Maybe the crab are just a little less active at night. That was a really nice pour. So some comments wondering if we ever lose gear. Uh, so far we haven't. We have short lined our pots before, which just means that somehow the shot of line got a bite in it, which takes up however many loops, just puts a bite in it and uh, doesn't fully stretch out the line so you, it submerges your buoy. But we were able to get it back. You can sometimes just drive around the general area where you where you put your pot and and you can see the buoy underwater it, it usually glows pretty well on a sunny day um, on cloudy days it's a little bit harder to see and on windy wavy days it's pretty much impossible to see it has to be a clear clear flat day to be able to spot them but in the case you can't find it under the water you can actually uh, hook up a grapple hook and just drag that around and hopefully be able to snag it. That's kind of where the importance of accurately marking your gear comes in. Um, if you know where you put your gear, then you'll know where to find it. So, so if you're pretty accurate on that part, you can usually get it back without too much hassle.
finishing buddies here. Good to have somebody to bounce info off of. See how the bay is looking where we're not fishing.
Alright, well, that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate all your support, all your comments. Feel free to drop any questions you may have down below, and I'll try and answer them all in the next one. So, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.